I am not going to give you a can question. You can you stay counterfeit? You are fake news. As long as you and I are alive, there will be newspapers, there will be magazines. I wanted to start by getting your sense of the scale of turmoil we're in right now. We've seen in the last few months the election of Donald Trump. Britain is on its way out of the European Union. Is this a wake-up call to the status quo, or is it the beginning of a new era in global politics? I think it's something which really we've seen coming for a while. I mean, how many conferences have you been at with titles like the need for inclusive capitalism or just capitalism or the growing dangers of growing income inequalities? <laughs> you are you're perhaps the quintessential insider-outsider. You were born in Greece, you're outside the US, you've moved from one side of the political spectrum to the other. I still have my accent. You still have your accent, <laughs> but now, you know, I think you're the consummate insider. Um, it, do you think, you know both sides of this, do you think that the US in particular, but the Western world broadly, is going to be able to come up with the kind of agenda that's needed? Well, I'm a congenital optimist, both because I'm Greek and as an, um, as an immigrant to the United States. I think we will, but it all depends on, um, on how wise our leaders are going to be. And if you think of it, we're drowning in data and starved for wisdom. And if you look at the leaders of the past, there was a lot more time for reflection. I mean, one of my favorite stories is FDR, you know, being pressured by Churchill to enter the war at a time when the American public was dead against it. And what did he do? He did something which would be unheard of today. He took 10 days off on a naval ship to think and reflect. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Or can you imagine anyone announcing, I'm taking 10 days off to reflect? But he came back with what was regarded as his political masterpiece, the land lease program that allowed him to sell entering the war to the American public, which basically changed the course of history. So I think right now there is this incredible gap between what we know we need to do and what we are doing and what we have been doing for years. And this gap can only be bridged by wise leaders. What do you think has been the role of the media in this growth of populism? Has the media fueled it? The media had definitely a role in uh, the Trump victory. I think the beginning of the, um, of the election cycle, um, he was given um, an amount of publicity and very uncritical publicity um, that was not justified by anything except the ratings. Is there a danger that in so, the, it's, it's already over for the mainstream media in the sense that it's going to be very hard for them to hold Donald Trump to account in a way that matters compared to perhaps 10, 20, 30 years ago. Um, right now, I think mainstream media have an even greater responsibility not to publish news that they have not verified, especially during um, the next four years when there are going to be plenty of legitimate reasons for the media to criticize Trump, to criticize him for things that are not real, yeah, it's so going to be very delegitimizing. Let's talk about what happens going forward. Donald Trump has a direct connection to, what, 17 million people on Twitter, many more through Facebook. Has he, in some sense, disintermediated the mainstream media? Yes, in some sense he has, but it's not always for the good in terms of his own interests either. I think um, somebody should take away his phone in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting because thus far, you know, he, he has been saying that he was going to tweet less, but actually he finds this a direct route to speak to people. But I think it's also a direct way to vent. I mean, he takes the bait. One of the other phenomena that we're seeing a lot of is this quote, disdain for experts. In some sense, the disdain for experts is as, as important and, or as part of the public discussion now as the disdain for, for the media. People gravitate to the opinions they like rather than wanting to be challenged, or too many people are. So do you think that we can really get back to a world where there is one single view that was the sort of mainstream view? Well, I think we have to absolutely get back to the world where there is such a thing as truth. 
Uh, but the mainstream media have a responsibility for where we are now. Uh, because if you think of it, um, the uh, assumption that every story had two sides, um, that whether it was climate change or um, was Obama born or not born in the United States, the mainstream media tended to have... Uh, that sort of false equivalence of the expert false equivalence, one says this yes. and expert two um, says the other. has been one of the problems uh, with the assumption that somehow there is no truth. Ariana Huffington, thank you very much. Thank you.